The night can be eerie, both on and off the bike, and this evening was no exception. A child's laughter startles me awake, and I see beams of lights bouncing in the trees. My eyes are trying to adjust, when suddenly a large white furry beast pokes its nose around and sniffs at me. A happy dog sits down and licks my face, and I raise my voice a little towards the giggling in the nearby woods, but soon they become screams. As it turns out, there's a dozen kids playing hide-and-seek on this warm summer evening. Where they came from, I don't know, but I'm sure they're all running back to where they came from. departure time was critical. I wanted to roll into trail just as McDonald's opened at 4.30, and I was right on time. Sometimes the plan comes together. After doubling down on a McDonald's breakfast, I set off at first light to tackle the notorious Columbia River Trail. This is one of my favorite sections of the BC Epic. It's a mix of sand and rocks, single tracks and roads. It's 35 kilometers long, but with a loaded bikepacking rig. It's a tough little beast. what happens when you slide off the edge. Just testing the bags out. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>
halfway up. Remember this hard last time, or shall I say soft? Life is all good. You don't get to see these very often up close. Big navigation markers on the Columbia River. You can see them through the trees at night and you shine your light on them and you drive towards them. Uh, you know, until you hit the shore. <laughs> Catchy and fling you all over. Milkshake. Smack my knee pretty good. Getting close to getting out of the, the ugly stuff on the, on the Columbia Trail here. After that, Castlegar and rail grade. Maybe no more crashes.
Yeah, I was supposed to be racing, but the heat was already in the mid-30s, and I needed a break before tackling the 900-meter grind up the Columbia Western Rail Grade to the summit 45 kilometers away. Maple syrup, sea salt, and ginger. Hmm. Just missing the pancake. Crazy big. Crazy cold. And back outside, it's 35 degrees centigrade. Sometimes you just gotta lay down and relax and stretch the back every once in a while. I finally found a little creek, soaked my towel in uh, cold water, strung down my back. Oh, feels nice. Oh, all right, let's get down to Christina Lake. Damn, I just had a rock kick up from my front wheel and smoke me in the shin. That hurt. Oh. Spicy. Oh, that's gonna leave a mark. Little, uh, little drizzle going on right now. Feels like a blast furnace or an air dryer right now. It's hot. It's spicy going down in these uh, rocks and a little bit of sand. Uh, update, uh, down through Christina Lake and hammering on to Grand Forks. Grab dinner, supplies to Greenwood. Undecided if I'll go farther than that because, you know, there's a lot of good uh, bakeries in Greenwood and I uh, really miss that. We'll see. Anyway, let's go. through Grand Forks late in the evening. I had full intention to just blast right on through, but I have to admit, a group of folks hollered at me from a quaint little street side patio and offered me a free beer. Now, how could I refuse that?
surprised that fits in there. We're about three quarters of the way up the Eholt Summit from Grand Forks. Um, this is a warming shelter that's been uh, made for the cross-country skiers that use the rail grade. Four nice bunks and a big table in there and people are taking really good care of it. I used to live in this area and fish the Granby River a fair bit and it's uh, nice to come up here. still and hot, so I just slept on top of the picnic table, enjoying a blanket of stars over my head, and dreaming about the bakeries in Greenwood. <laughs> 